Crimson Trace announces Link, the world's first wireless laser and white light system, combining a green laser and 300 lumen light with instinctive activation for AR-type rifles. Link, smart, simple, secure. Learn more at crimsontrace.com. Today on Tom Gresham's Gun Talk, Tom's out today, but the After Show crew is stepping in. Jim and Michelle will be talking hogs, suppressors, competitive shooting, imported guns, your range reports, and more. Call in now. One, Tom Talk Gun. Well, that's kind of weird. He didn't say, now here's Tom. Oh. How come that professional announcer never mentioned that? Hmm, a little editing. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Jim. How are you? I'm great. You? I'm great. I think just you and I should have a little private conversation today amongst a couple hundred stations, our closest friends. Sounds good. Yeah, Tom's out gallivanting again. Actually, he's duct taped in the basement of the studio. We're just not telling him. (laughs) We've commandeered the airwaves. People have been warned. Yeah. Yeah. It was was out there. (laughs) If you're not familiar with our voices, then that means you haven't listened to the Gun Talk after show and shame on you. Right. Totally unacceptable. We have a lot of fun. We do have a lot of fun. And for some reason, uh, I'm assuming Tom never heard our first guest host shot because (laughs) somehow we got a second one. (laughs) Well, I think he realizes it takes the both of us to replace him. (laughs) (laughs) At least. At least. But we're not without, we're not totally sans Gresham. We have some Gresham. This is true. We have a certain amount of Gresham. And we're going to go to that certain amount of Gresham. Mr. Ryan, how are you? Hey, guys. How you doing? Great. Great. How are you? Well, I am uh, westbound and down uh, on my way back from filming a gun venture episode. Oh, sounds horrible. <laughs> it, yeah, it was rough. Well, you know, gun venture is kind of, it's our TV show on the Sportsman Channel, and we travel around the country. It's really a travel show as much as anything, and we do stuff with guns, whether that's competition shooting or hunting or training classes. But we also always look for some sort of side adventure thing that we just think the audience would enjoy. So this time, we drove down to Panama City Beach, Florida. And no, we weren't doing, uh, doing jello shots and you know, funneling beer. <laughs> so it wasn't spring break. Right. Think, what in the world are you doing in Panama City, Florida? <laughs> no. Um, yeah, no gelatin It testing. wasn't MTV spring break. Um, we actually were down there doing something called the Monster Hunt, and we w- we did, we set this up through this company called Intercoastal Safaris. Stephen Lee at Intercoastal Safaris is like he's a real creative guy who sets up uh, with really good outfitters and guides, and comes up with some really fun things. And I've known him for a few years. I said, Stephen, what would be really cool that you have down there that we could do for TV? He says. Oh, Ryan, I got just the thing. We call it our monster hunt. We start out in the morning. We go fishing for sharks. We catch sharks uh, right off the beach in in Panama City or right in the bay. And then that evening, we go on a night vision thermal uh, hog hunt and do a little tactical hog hunting. So that's what we did, and uh, it was a lot of fun. So what do you use for the shark fishing? Fishing poles, mostly. Okay. <laughs> no Wait, guns. Huh? Um, no shark guns. No, he's, you know, the, I guess kind of the standard um, chum chum slick in the water and big okay. hunks of bonita or barracuda and uh, and see what we could do. So we actually caught, uh, we did catch a shark. I'd never caught a shark before. That was really cool. And then I caught a really big stingray. It was about a 60-pound stingray. Wow. And... So it was just, it was great. And then we got out there um, at night, again, went after the hogs. And one of the things that's really fun about uh, hog hunting is all the gear. I mean, you it's kind of the, you, you can do it there. No one really does it old school anymore with like a, a flashlight. Everybody has night vision and thermal and all this stuff. So, and working with all of our different sponsors on that show, we actually had a ton of cool stuff. We actually had... Um, the new electro optics from Trigicon, all thermal. You had the IR Hunter, which is kind of 
it's a, it's, they're all thermal, but this one is more traditional in style and feel with knobs like a regular rifle scope. And they had the Reef IR, which was a real lightweight deal. Uh, and we had a patrol, um, IR patrol, which was a handheld observation device. So you didn't have to use your gun and, and scan the horizon, scan the fields. You could just hold up this little, this little guy. And the crazy thing about thermal is when you shine it out there, um, there is nowhere for the animals to hide. If they're out there and not concealed by a big bush or something like that, it's like they're shining a flashlight at you going, hello, I'm over here. <laughs> Pick me. <laughs> now, how heavy, awesome. how, have, how heavy of a population are you guys in with the hogs? Well, we were, we were hunting on mostly on uh, farmland. So this was um, strawberry farm, peanut farms, and we were, they were in some cotton fields. And, the, yeah, the hogs are a big problem, and that's why we're doing it is because the farmers – um, contact these outfitters and say, please, you know, hey, you're welcome to bring people over here and shoot as many as possible because they're such an invasive species. Um, so that's what we did. And we had, uh, we shot, we had two rifles set up with the thermal, shooting 300 blackout. And um, one was the SIG MCX in a, in a pistol configuration with a stabilizer brace. So that was really fun and lightweight and handy. And then we had the Ruger takedown AR. I mean, it's an AR, but I said, man, I really want to shoot. So I don't want to use a two two three. I'd rather something a little bit beefier as far as caliber wise. Right. And I got the, uh, the, we had, I looked around the office and said, what do we have? And we had a 300 blackout barrel for the takedown AR. I mean, I, the swap out for that. I'm, I'm kind of like, uh, Tom, my dad in that, you know, I'm not. I'm not exactly a gunsmith, but even I could do that. It was easy. It's kind of funny because you talk about you know most guys. Well, I looked around the office and I found an extra mouse and keyboard. Not you guys. <laughs> yeah, no. My oh, barrel. Well, no. there's an extra barrel. What do you know? <laughs> well, on this gun. that is true. Yes, we go. <laughs> what can we bring? Hmm. Oh, we got the new Ruger SR1911 and 10 millimeter. Ooh. I'll load that up with some hard cast ammo just in case I get a chance to to use it on a hog. I didn't, but oh. Um, I was I was really hoping I could be the first like I think maybe one of the first people out there to use that on a on a critter, yeah. but um, it was dark and we got the hogs we got up on we got them with the rifles and then um, we never got a chance at another one that night but we were up till about five a.m. got about two and a half hours of sleep and um, now we're heading back. So, Ryan, let me ask you real quick. You're talking about outfitters, and you, of course, took your gear. For a person who doesn't already have that, are they set up to take in somebody who's interested in hunting and give them the gear necessary? That's a great question because it is a uh, this stuff isn't cheap, all this gear. They actually do provide it. Um, they have the rifles and the night vision and all that stuff. Um, we just happened to bring this stuff because we had sponsors uh, letting us borrow their really expensive gear, which was nice. And um, but they do have all that stuff for you, so you you can actually show up with nothing, and you can go shark fishing and night hog hunting and all that stuff uh, right there in Panama City. It's pretty neat. Wow, and all all that killer stuff you got the in, the and you said you got infrared and thermal or just thermal. Well, uh, now I'm not. I'm not a, a super duper expert, but I infrared. It, 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 there's you use those terms and they get, they get used interchangeably, but I know right. they're different. Thermal and night vision are not the same thing. Uh, night vision amplifies the available light, so it's like when you see that greenish. Uh, right. You know, if you're watching, you know, we're trying to find uh, the ghost ghost hunters or something. That green look to it. Mm -hmm. Thermal just sees the difference in heat. And so, um, you'll, have, you'll have oranges and reds and yellows and they have the colored thermal or a lot of the stuff when you're hunting is either white hot or black hot. So you can, you can actually set the settings. Oh, so cool. everything else, the, the cooler it is, the darker, blacker it is, and the hotter it is, the whiter it is. So if you think about looking out into a field at night and there's kind of different degrees of black and gray mm -hmm. with the trees and the ground, but then all of a sudden there's a hog out there and he is bright white. I mean, there's just, there's no mistaking it. Wow. 
And you can see cool. you can see the outlines with some of this gear too, so you know what you're aiming at or glassing across as well. Oh yeah, and you know it really helped. We had both the thermal and the night vision, and they kind of both have their strengths, and so it was helpful to have them both on hand. But you can absolutely. I mean, I could tell from the, the, the gear we were using, and the Trigon stuff is really good. I mean, it's probably some of the best thermal out there. I could tell the difference between deer and hogs very quickly, like within seconds. So if you ha- if you happen to have somebody walk across the range or whatever, you would, you would see them. You would know it's a human being. Oh, absolutely. You would know, yeah. I mean, I guess if it was really far out, five or 600 yards, it may be a question, but you're not going to take a shot right, that right. far. Be- you're not going to take a shot that far because you don't know what it is. Um, right. and, obviously, and probably I couldn't hit anything from that distance. <laughs> <laughs> So you said that you were taping all of this, yes? Yeah. And so when we're can when can we tune in? Adventure. Yeah. <laughs> When's that going to be available to view? Uh, this will be probably a couple months. In fact, it's, that's a perfect segue. Um, the new season of Gun Venture starts this week on the Sportsman Channel. Um, airs four times a week or five, four or five times a week, but the prime time airing is on Thursday nights. And so look for it. Um, I was just talking to a guy this week that said, I don't think I get it. But then I, I looked around and actually I do get it. You yeah. know, it's one of those um, specialized cable channels that you actually may get. And you don't even realize it. Um, but starting this week, new episodes of Gun Venture. Also new episodes of Guns and Gear um, Thursday night. So look for it. Uh, hey, Ryan, stick with us one second, will you? Sure will. We're going to take a short break here and uh, pay a couple bills. And we're going to be rejoining Ryan Gresham, the mad hog killer. Monster hunter. Yes, yes. <laughs> Stand by, folks. Guns are hungry. They crave lead, feast on recoil, and are ravenous for performance. On the menu, Agula Ammunition's complete line of rimfire, centerfire, and shot shells. Each and every round of Agula Ammunition is made with the highest quality of materials and crafted to ensure optimal reliability, accuracy, and proficiency. Visit AguilaAmmo.com and let the feeding frenzy begin. Agula Ammunition. Feed your firearm. Alien Gear Holsters, the most comfortable concealable holsters on the planet, is proud to craft the award-winning Cloak Tuck 3.0. Dubbed the best holster in the history of ever by Concealed Nation readers, this American-made IWB holster includes a forever warranty, free shell trades for life, and a 30-day test drive, all for just $43.88. Learn more about the most advanced concealed carry holster at aliengearholsters.com. Attacks happen every day. How will you react? See real people put into real-life criminal attack situations on First Person Defender. Discover what works and what doesn't. Kidnapping, ATM robbery, home invasion, and other attacks. Learn how to save your life and the lives of your family. Get the entire first season on DVD at ShopGunTalk.com. Get prepared. ShopGunTalk.com. Used guns can be a great value, but you have to know who you're buying from. What if you could buy quality used guns with a lifetime warranty from the Internet's largest online reseller? That's what you get at Dewey'sGuns.com. They stand behind every firearm purchase for life. If you have a problem, they'll either fix or replace your gun. Pistols, rifles, shotguns, and more. Check out their inventory today at Dewey'sGuns.com. In the war on terror, fighting crime in the streets, in competition and homes around the world, one name in firearms stands out, Sig Sauer. Our pistols and rifles are renowned for their unfailing performance. This same commitment to excellence can be found in our line of SIGTAC accessories and the training offered by the Sig Sauer Academy. For unmatched quality, reliability, and innovation when it counts, choose Sig Sauer. Visit SigSauer.com today. Ah, 
I had to let the music run a little long, the sound of a Hammond B3. <laughs> We're talking with Ryan Gresham, world-renowned TV star, huh, Ryan? Sort of. I mean, I'm, I'm the biggest TV star on my street, I think. <laughs> In the car at the moment, yeah. Well, yeah. Ob- obviously you were talking about Gun Venture, but Guns and Gear and uh, First Person Defender, uh, plus um, older Gun Talk television stuff and classic Gun Talk TV videos. Now all of that stuff's available in, on Roku. And on all, Roku, yep. Uh, Apple TV, Amazon Fire, YouTube, find us on Facebook, you know, get Twitter, Instagram, all those places. So, you know, the, the world of media is a change in, and we're trying to deliver the content. However, people want to watch it and listen to it is how we want to deliver it. And, and I guess as of now, Gun Talk Radio, you've heard of that before, I'm sure. Gun Talk Radio. Is that a thing? Is that, I don't know if that's <laughs> going to It gonna will be. On. It's going to be the next big thing. Uh, but actually, the, uh, the the Gun Talk shows we're doing right now are uh, available also on Amazon Fire. Yeah, on and, podcast. And yeah, so, yeah. So it's, uh, it's uh, now in video I form. I tell you guys, our hog hunt last night, we had the funniest thing that happened. This this is not a gun thing, but we we went to all these different spots, and, and these, these guys, they have worked with different farmers and different landowners and know the area, and so we're trying different spots, and he's got... Uh, he's got a couple game cameras that are infrared, so they see at night, and when they take a picture, they text the picture to him, So, which is just super cool. You're driving around trying to check 10,000 acres, and he goes, ooh, there's a hog over, over in this area right oh, now. yeah. So we hightail it over there, about a 15-minute drive, and it's actually um, like a grain, a place, a, a, a feedlot, grain storage uh, piece of property just outside of the little town that we were in and, and uh, outside of uh, like Apalachicola, Florida. And um, they said the, the hogs are actually breaking into this warehouse and eating grain. And so we're just outside of town. We, we you know, go in there real quiet, the trucks, and we shut off the lights. We're, you know, we're just, you know, black ops at this point, <laughs> and we've got our night vision, our thermal, and we've got our super duper souped up ARs, and with our single point slings, and we're sneaking in there, and all of a sudden, we hear something. We're walking down this little dirt road. We hear something behind us, and we look, and there's a car, a car that was pulled over the side of the road off the dirt road, a couple in the back seat. They look up and see six dudes with night vision and thermal and ARs. They hop on the front seat and peel out. <laughs> like a hog SWAT team. Oh. Yeah, they're going, we're, we're going, what are they doing here? And then, what are they doing here? So, so hogs aren't the only population you're trying to control, evidently, Ryan. Yeah, we, we controlled another piece of the population last night. Well. <laughs> that's, that's, that's or great. decreased the population. That's right. <laughs> Something. Yeah, we did our part, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So, Ryan, let me ask, because hog hunting has been, I guess, popular or gaining popularity in the last several years. And obviously, these farmers are burdened with their property and peanut trees and fields just being destroyed. So what do you see? Is that the biggest thing out there right now, hunting in, in the South? Well, I mean, it's it's become so popular because um, a lot of the southern states, because that's where most of this big population problem is, uh, are really deregulating the hogs. So um, depending on the state regs, you don't have to have a hunting license at all. You can hunt them year-round. You can hunt them at night. Um, you can hunt them a lot of different ways. And... Uh, in fact, the, the outfitter was saying, he says he gets a lot of calls come about February or March from guys going, man, I am just itching to get out in the woods and do some hunting. Deer season's over and all the other big game stuff is over. And that's why they go after hogs. And then I guess we would lead people astray if we weren't to say that they can be a dangerous game, of course, to go after as well. Yeah, I mean... They they get big and they can get mean, but um, you know it's it's just another opportunity for for hunters. Um, they need to be the population needs to be controlled, and 
people hunt them in the daytime as well, but they tend to be very nocturnal, and night hunting is a real effective way to do it. So all this cool gear you used, the uh, thermal imaging stuff and the IR stuff, uh, that's all equipment I'm assuming uh, will never get back to the manufacturer. It's staying in your office, I'm assuming. <laughs> Along with that 300 oh, swap I, out barrel. We actually <laughs> lost it out there in the field, and I have to write a letter <laughs> <laughs> apologizing about that. Dear Trijicon, we're yeah, so was, sorry. Actually, one of the guys that was using it last night goes, oh, my Lord, this is, this is a game changer. This is so crazy. Now, I mean, the stuff is not cheap, especially... Uh, thermal is generally more expensive than the night vision stuff. Right. And, uh, I mean, so I don't know. I mean, if the the Trigicon stuff, which is kind of the best of the best, I think, for the consumer thermal right now, runs, I want to say, between about six and $9,000 for the optic. Mm. Right. Well, you know, not it's, cheap, it's, but, right. but that's what super you, effective. Yeah, and you spend that on a good rifle and good scope anyway, pretty darn close. I mean, it's it's not yeah, way, I mean, way out of line. Uh, yeah. Hey, there's no such thing as a cheap hobby. If it's your thing and you're into it, you're going to get it. And there are some kind of other neat uses um, for thermal that you start seeing. I mean, people obviously use it for navigation when, uh, like, doing boat traffic and search and rescue. Heck, I think home inspectors are using it to look at, see where heat leaks are right. coming out of houses and all this stuff. So Energy audits, um, yeah. it's pretty. It's pretty neat. Well, and, of course, people can keep the meat, too, so it's not necessarily you're spending all this money and not gaining anything from it. So people take home the hams or, or whatever they want out of these hogs as well. They sure can, yeah. Um, make it into sausage. And a lot of times um, when you when they're shooting a lot of hogs, there are a lot of programs to donate those hogs to uh, local um, organizations who either um, – it's a shelter, you know, feed feed the, the hungry shelter, um, or there's church fundraisers that do a beast feast, and they'll, they'll uh, do it that way as well. Awesome. Wow. Hey, Ryan, are you able to stick around for a minute? Sure. All right, we're going to keep you on hold here just for a second and uh, do what we have to do. We're going to be right back with more gun talk because this is Tom Gresham's Gun Talk, temporarily being commandeered by Michelle Cleland and Jim Kenzie. We'll be right back. Sign up for our Gun Talk newsletter and join the Truth Squad at www.guntalk.com. Now, back to Gun Talk with Washington Times opinion page regular contributor, Tom Gresham. Well, Tom is busy contributing to the Washington uh, Times, I'm sure. And uh, we're doing our contribution here, filling in for Tom while he's out gallivanting. Today is Hog Day on Gun Talk. Ooh. And if you have any questions, uh, we have a supreme hog hunter with us, Mr. Ryan Gresham. Hey, Ryan. How's it going? Uh, we're hanging in there, buddy. We've got a first segment under our belt. <laughs> and if I have anybody... haven't even pulled you off the air yet. Isn't that cool? <laughs> it is cool. <laughs> That's an oversight, I'm sure. If, uh, you if need you... to try harder. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. If uh, you want to give us a call, by all means, please call in and uh Throw something at us. We'd like to have a little banter back and forth with you. The number is Tom Talk Gun. For all you numerical people, that's 866-825-5486. Give us a buzz. And uh, so are you doing any drumming while you're hunting, or do you try to keep those two things separate, Ryan? I don't have time to even take selfies while I'm hunting. I can't even, you know. Oh, no. Oh, no. What's well, what, the, what in the world? Why are we even here? Um, no, you know, something else we actually did while we were down there is kind of part of the adventure thing is we went up with panhandle helicopters and flew in a helicopter around the area to get that kind of that aerial view. But I got to tell you, it was funny. We set this up this week um, with kind of the manager of uh, that operation, and she said, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, our, our owner would probably be good on camera, and we'll do a little interview, and I said, sounds great. So as we're driving down there on uh, Friday, I get a call from the owner, and he says, yeah, we're, we're all ready for you. And he said, so this is this is for Gun Venture? I said, yeah, this is Gun Venture, the show in Sportsman. She goes, 
Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. It came on last night, right? I went, yeah, it did. <laughs> cool. He said, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, come on down. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll talk guns. I'm like thinking, I thought we were going to talk helicopters. <laughs> and uh, when we get there, he says, immediately he goes, oh, come on back to his truck, opens it up, shows me his 6.5 Creedmoor precision rifle, <laughs> his, you know, SBR. He had something I had not heard of before. And I'm wondering if the audience wants to call in if they have any knowledge about this. It's the 762 by 40. So it's um, it's kind of a a 300 blackout, but it's about 5 millimeters longer. So you get just a little bit more powder, a little bit more velocity out of it. But I guess it's something, I don't know if it was developed by Wilson Combat, but he said Bill Wilson was, I guess, affiliated with it in some way, or, or at the least he was uh, chambering the 762 by 40 in some of his rifles. I just thought that was cool. The cartridge I hadn't really heard of, kind of a wildcat, I guess. Yeah, 39, yeah, but 40, that's kind of... It's amazing how long it takes some of that stuff to creep across the country, though. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean... It's hot in a certain area. Yeah, and then it just carries on by word of mouth. Hey, I do have a question for you, Ryan, kind of along the lines of industry, because you guys definitely have the ins and outs of being able to try out some of the coolest, latest gear and, and firearms. Where do you see our industry going? Where is the new focus, or has it changed at all? Well, you know, it's funny. Concealed carry still is a very uh, hot topic, and certainly an area of product development for the gun industry because it's just not going away. It just keeps growing. I think the last number I heard is we're at 15 million permits now. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. And that concern is not going away for, for people pretty much around our our country. I think they're all concerned about their safety and want to be able to protect themselves and their families. So that's certainly going to be a focus ongoing. That's not going away. Um Lately, you've seen the long-range rifle stuff become more popular, but this stuff, this stuff kind of ebbs and flows. I mean, um, you have cowboy action that was really hot for a while, and there's still people who do it, but you don't hear as much about it. Um, three gun, there's still a ton of people who love three gun, um, but they kind of, I think, they settle into whatever the the natural number is for these different sports, whether it's 8,000 three-gunners or, or 10,000 cowboy action folks or 30,000 action pistol people. Um, kind of everybody has their little niche, and there's that's kind of one of the neat things about the shooting sports is there's so many different uh, sports that you can get into. Yeah, and I think you've seen a lot, at least around here, I know I've seen a lot of people get into concealed carry and then branch out into the shooting sports. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, they got a, they got a gun to protect themselves and their family, but now they want to do some you know, IDPA stuff or something, you know, some, some pistol match stuff to, to get better. And it, it kind of unintended consequences, really. It's probably no, one, no consideration well, of that going I into. mean, Yeah, absolutely. And people get that's, – that's how a lot of people get into firearms ownership. If you didn't grow up with your family hunting and shooting and that's what you did, the next step is – people usually gravitate towards getting the gun for their personal protection. But what happens is they go to the shooting range and they say, this is a lot of fun. (laughs) And not everyone, you know, is going to become Doug Koenig or Rob Latham, but they start becoming hobbyist shooters. And then they, they may start out with their full size nine millimeter handgun because that seems to be kind of the, the bread and butter for personal protection. But then they realize, oh, wait, I can shoot 22s. It's cheaper, it's quieter, it's easy to shoot, and it's just as much fun to shoot. Well, and a lot of these manufacturers have their own firearm academies, which is something that hasn't been there before, that are fully open to the public to come on in and gain training with with the professional. Yeah, and the academies, all these different training schools that have popped up, that has been something, Michelle, that's that's changed, I would say, in the past maybe five to seven years. You hear Tom on the show talk a lot about gun sight, um, and then you, there are other really great schools out there, uh, the U.S. Shooting uh, Academy, um, the Sig Sauer Academy, and the Sig Sauer Academy actually runs a ton of classes and a ton of students through there. Um, 
And you've got, obviously, we've talked about Tiger McKee on the show before with Shoot Right. But you also have um, a lot of a lot of people opening up these shooting schools who maybe are former military, who because we've we've been pretty active in the last uh, decade or more on on that side of things. There are a lot of people with good experience that are training. Now you do have to vet them and figure out who's who's right for you mm-hmm. and who's good and who's safe and all that stuff. But I would say more and more I'm hearing good feedback on schools that would be kind of relatively new, but they're teaching really good stuff. And, and there are a lot of disciplines within that, whether it's um, a tactical pistol type thing or it's long range shooting or it's um, a carbine, but it's another way to get familiar with your gun, get improve your shooting and your confidence. And I really hope that the gun talk radio listener listening audience we, we harp on it. I know we do, but it's just such a good experience. It's a valuable experience, and it really does change your life uh, as far as when it comes to guns and shooting and your safety. I just encourage everybody to just make the time and spend the money and go take one of these classes because it'll just – It'll be changed the way you approach guns. It really will. I think it's a responsibility you actually have. You bought a gun, you've got your basic CCW permit, and and a lot of folks think that that's where it ends. And that's, boy, it's just a start, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It really is. I mean, I'm. it's kind of funny. I think that the way I, my approach, I don't know what you guys think, Jim, Michelle, but... Um, as far as a freedom aspect goes, I'm not really sure if we should need a permit to carry a gun, um, but I'm glad that there's some training there, but I really wish more people would get more training. Well, I think we have the responsibility to not only be worried about ourselves and our family, but you've got to worry about your neighbor's family being on the street, and your training absolutely reflects that on how you carry yourself and how you carry. Exactly. Exactly. It's something we've talked about on the show numerous times, but mm-hmm. I mean, buying a buying a gun is, and and saying you're ready is like buying a piano and you're ready to go play a concert. I mean, oh, you've heard me play before, I practice. see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well, Mr. Ryan Gresham, star of Gun Venture and millions of other things, glad to have you with us today. Thanks so much for hanging out. Thanks for having me on, and uh, tell Mr. Puckett I said hello when you have him on. He's a good guy. I will. We're going to have more hog stuff coming up for you today on Gun Talk. Uh, Again, thanks again, Ryan. Take care, buddy. All right. Be safe out there. All right, so stick with us here on Gun Talk, 866-825-5486. Probably easier to call Tom Talk Gun because Michelle Talk Gun was already taken. We had to to go with that. (laughs) Stick around. We'll be right back. The pistol that redefines pocket carry just got even better. The Ruger LCP-2 has improved sights, an easy-to-rack slide, a larger textured grip surface for a secure grip and recoil reduction, and a short, crisp, single-action trigger pull for real-world accuracy. It's so small and light that there's no reason to ever leave home without your LCP-2. A serious pistol in a pint-sized package. Learn more about the LCP-2 at Ruger.com. For 36 years, the U.S. Sportsmen's Alliance has been fighting to protect hunting, fishing, and trapping for sportsmen from coast to coast. Today, we are under constant attack from extremist animal rights groups who want to end your ability to hunt in the U.S. Join us to protect our sporting heritage and our way of life outdoors. To join or for more information on how you can help, go to ussportsmen.org. That's ussportsmen.org. You got your carry permit. Then that's good. But do you know you could use more training? Get the DVDs, which have what you need. Springfield Armory presents Concealed Carry 1 and Concealed Carry 2 with Bata Group. Learn specific concealed carry skills from Top Gun fighting trainers. Get trained. Be prepared. This really is life and death. ShopGunTalk.com That's ShopGunTalk.com 
Hardcore tactical professionals who put their lives on the line every day depend on Surefire. For decades, Surefire has built the first and finest professional grade flashlights, weapon mounted lights, hearing protection, and suppressors. We build the best because lives depend on it. And we know failure is not an option. We design, engineer, and manufacture Surefire products right here in the U.S. For you, for your loved ones, Surefire. American built, American strong. Surefire.com. Hey, Michelle, I figured out if we just let the music play long, we don't have to talk at all. Oh. Three hours of music talk. Hey, we got good music. We do. We have some killer music. <laughs> Welcome back to Gun Talk. The number is 866-825-5486. And I've had a lot of stuff going on this week. A yes, lot of we stuff. have. We've had some, uh, some idiots involved in shootings. Because for lack of a better term, I don't know, maybe I'm not as graceful as the way Tom puts it, but <laughs> these people are idiots. And uh, there, there was something happened. Uh, I thought it was crazy. I don't know if you saw this or not, Michelle, but in uh, Durham, South Carolina, this guy got robbed, right? Mm-hmm. Family actually got robbed. But they weren't just robbed, like, give me your wallet, give me your possessions. Okay, do tell. Here's how they were robbed. They had a gun held to them and said, okay, now we're going to Target. <laughs> You're going to take me on a little shopping spree. Wow. Okay. So if you think you've got it in your mind, like, hey, you know, we know how this is going to go down. If I ever get robbed, it's going to be walking down an alley and stuff. You have no idea. So it, that one turned out okay because the employee saw the, the 29-year-old holding them at gunpoint. Since you're not allowed to have guns at Target. Yeah. So mm-hmm. thank goodness for that sign. Otherwise, the employees would have never called. <laughs> <Right>? yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can't rob them in aisle three. <laughs> we don't like guns in here. Yeah. So anyway, we can talk about this a little bit. We got Derek in, uh, in Texas, in Lubbock, Texas, with a uh, Springfield. He's got some questions, and I'm going to turn it over to my Springfield expert, Michelle, who's saying, no, don't do that to me. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're stuck. How's it going, Derek? Welcome to Gun Talk, Derek. Question regarding the Springfield XDE. Um, I just saw pictures of it. I haven't shot it. I haven't even handled it. I just wanted to get y'all's thoughts on it as far as concealed carry goes. Uh, second question is, I do live in the West Texas area. I didn't know if you recommend any places for you know, tactical shooting training. Um, I've never done anything like that. I do have a concealed carry, but didn't know if you could recommend any places. I wouldn't know any trainer specifically in your area. I'm sorry for that. But um, I know Tom would probably have some recommendations better than we could. The Springfield Armory XDE, that's their new pistol. Um, It is super. They've made some changes. It's made it nicer for recoil. If you're a fan of a 9mm, I'm assuming you are. I don't yeah. see how you could go wrong with that firearm. Have you ever shot any of the Springfield lineup? In I their... do. I actually carry a Springfield XDS. Okay. Yeah, so you have the slim. I, I think this would be a good companion. And, of course, keeping it in the same caliber is always a plus, too. Um, but, yeah, yeah we've, we've had lots of people. I think we've even had people call in that um, they love that pistol. So I don't think you can go wrong. Springfield Armory, of course, is a strong manufacturer with a great warranty on it. So try it out. Give us a range report when you do. Yeah. Appreciate you. Thank you. You're welcome. Also, you might want to check out uh, tacticalranch.com and Texas Republic Firearms Academy. Both of them are more geared towards uh, self-defense protection than they are for target shooting and stuff. But hopefully that will help you. I'm not uh, necessarily saying these guys are the greatest, but it was a quick little Google there for you. So hopefully that helped you out, Derek. We've got uh, we've got some guests coming up here. We've got another segment this hour, but we've got some cool guests coming up. And we are going to be talking more about hog hunting and such. And something you're going to try pretty soon, Michelle? You're going to try hog hunting? Hog hunting? Yeah. I, I've never done it. My family members have. They love it. Yeah? It's addictive, they say. Yeah, well, I uh, I would give it a shot, I think. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Yeah, pun intended. <laughs> pun intended. Yeah, I think, I think the 10 mil thing, though. Is, is, you want that up close? I do. I, well, no, I want 10 mil with a lever action. That's what I want. But <laughs> there you go. Can't have it all. <laughs> That's right. So stick with us on Gun Talk. We do have another segment this hour. Give us a call. Tom, talk gun. Hey, 
And welcome back to Gun Talk. We're having a blast here. I was eavesdropping to our call screener, Tom, who is also an engineer, but today he's call screening, and I hear him say, no, I'm not Michelle. <laughs> Sorry, so- Tom. <laughs> He's wait- I think he's waving. Is that what he's doing? <laughs> yeah, he's I think. Yeah, he was something, waving. Yes. To- yes. I'm going to get right to the phones here. We got Rob in Shreveport, Louisiana, and he's got some uh, questions and comments. And uh, let's hear what you have to say about uh, training here, Robert. How's it going, buddy? Great today. I uh, thank you for uh, listening to me. I'm, uh, I was uh, uh, listening to uh, all the uh, encouragement that uh, that you give to everybody who gets a concealed carry permit. Uh, to get additional training, and that's certainly needed. Uh, and uh, but it occurred to me that if we are going to have uh, uh, to get a permit to, for concealed carry, that perhaps the NRA and other uh, shooting sports associations should advocate for requiring more uh, more uh, training with the gun, uh, so that uh, people are more confident confident and competent with them. Yeah, absolutely. I think the thing we run into, and Ryan said the same thing, and it's the way I feel, you shouldn't need a permit at all to carry, but then we're assuming that the average person is going to be smart and get training, and we can't make that assumption. So if there could be some some way it could be done with, without legislation, you just think common sense would take over, but we all know how that far that goes. Right, and every state is different in what they mandate the requirements being before you can get your license. So some have an hour of shooting or, or whatnot, and some states I've heard don't even require that. And a lot of states now are even going to true constitutional carry. Yes. Most of them are if you're a resident, but there are some that aren't. Uh, what do you feel, Robert? Should this be a, sta- in, a state in, issue? In, in Louisiana, the uh, the requirement was to uh, shoot like uh, uh, 10, 10 rounds or two clips for, for a uh, uh, to punch holes in paper, and it seems like we, we need a lot more than that, and perhaps it could voluntarily be done by those offering the concealed carry uh, uh, training, and yeah. Uh, yeah. and you just continue the uh, the day that you're there, uh, and uh, and have. Uh, uh, you know, a couple more hours. Like advancement of skills, yeah. And and I think that's something like Jim and I and Tom and, and Ryan has said, you definitely need to follow through. These are skills that can be lost. If they're not used and used frequently and used in the right manner, they're gone. So it's not just something you learn once and it's like getting on a bike again. Right. And you would think that, again, you would think common sense would say, hey, I want to get better with this. This is a tool. I don't want to suck at it. I want to, I want to be confident. I want to keep my family safe. Yeah. Right, right. And uh, I don't know, you th- maybe in some kind of incentive project, I just hate to make it legislation. Right. But eh, I guess I'm not totally against it either if it, if it can loosen stuff up for the average person. It's just such a fine line you walk there because we want less government, not more. Right. Well, you know, we've introduced something called Hunter's Ed. And before you can get a license, you have to take a Hunter's Education class. And it covers the basic safeties and ins and outs and what a deer drive is. And it introduces different, I'm going to say, weapons because that's the way it's termed there. But, you know, maybe that's something that we need to do, something generic, because there's far more to carrying a gun than knowing how to shoot. Right, right. And and you're really doing yourself a disservice by by just getting a gun because, you know, when you're in the heat of the moment, you're not going to say, oh, boy, I really should have taken that class. Right. That's yeah, not the late. time. Yeah, that's yeah. not the time to be discovering your shortcomings. But uh, we appreciate the call. That it, It's a little food for thought there. And, uh, Robert, we appreciate you doing that. We're, uh, we're coming up on the end of this hour, of course, because that's how hours run. They are a finite number. Uh, we got some folks coming up that are pretty interesting. We're going to be talking more hog hunting with Jeff. we got uh, a world champion coming back home from a Russia tournament. That's a brand-new tournament, actually. We're going to be talking to her, and we got all kind of stuff. So stick around. Give us a buzz at Tom Talk Gun, and we'll do our best to get you in here for the next hour. And thanks for letting Jim and Michelle come and do the airways for a couple more hours.